The Regional Centre for Energy and Environmental Sustainability, RCs, is located at the University of Energy and Natural Resources, Sunyani, in the Bono region of Ghana. In May 2018, the World Bank put up a call for the setting up of centers of excellence in Africa. So when I heard the call, I decided that I will put in an application. We decided to call it the Regional Center for Energy and Environmental Sustainability. If you look at the research areas that are sees we focus on, we look at um, energy, renewable energy. When we talk about renewable energy, we are talking of wind, solar, hydropower, biogas. We are also looking at energy and society. So in terms of energy and society, we are looking at access to energy, affordable energy, energy security. Then also we are looking at energy and environment. The energy and environment, what we mean is that harnessing of energy comes with a lot of environmental challenges. So how can we harness our energy, deploy them, and still maintain the environment? Then we're also looking at energy transition. We have been in the era where we have depended a lot on fossil fuels. How will countries um, transition from energy to renewable energy? Then we are also looking at energy transformation and energy management. Um, energy is very expensive to develop. So when you have been able to produce the energy, how do we sustainably utilize it? The center, regional center for energy and environmental sustainability has been uh, impacted positively for the investor in, um, in diverse ways. First, the center admits foreign students and one key uh, function objective of every university is internationalization. We are in a global world and so this university as a result of the center, we have students from about 11 African countries that in so doing, we were able to right, enhance our internationalization drive. As you were, every university wants to be ranked among the top universities in the world. And most of this is based on uh, criteria including research output. And through the center, we are coming out with quality research output, quality and number of research output. In terms of its academic programs, RC is currently offers two MSc programs, namely the Master of Science in Sustainable Energy Engineering and Management and the Master of Science in Environmental Engineering Management. It also runs two PhD programs, that is the Doctor of Philosophy in Sustainable Energy Engineering and Management and the Doctor of Philosophy in Environmental Engineering Management. The RCs run short courses as well, including energy management and energy audit, solar PV design and installation, and intends to add to the number of courses in the 2022 academic year. The duration for the courses for the MSCs, we offer them for two years. So students come and they spend two years in the program. And for the PhD, students normally take from three years so up to four years. So the minimum is, is three years at the PhD level. The center offers internship opportunities to students. In fact, that is compulsory. Uh, each of them has to go for industrial attachment for a period of not less than four weeks. So they go, depending on the company that we send them to, they go for a period of four weeks and up to about sometimes three months. My experience so far has been good. Um, I was welcomed here in 2019, 2019. I mean, at the beginning, it wasn't so easy because we are the first batch. So um, they had some few little issues, some few things to settle about the accommodations and all those things, but so far it's been okay. To study at our seas, our minimum qualification is that 
First, you have to obtain your degree from a reputable university, a recognizable university uh, anywhere in the world. If you have PhD program and MSc program, you need to have a lower, second class lower minimum BSc during your BSc degrees to, to enter into our master's program. And at your master's level, you also need to have a minimum of uh, second class lower division minimum before you can enter. And also, the third criteria is to our programs are in uh, environmental engineering management and also sustainable energy management. So you need to have the related stages during your uh, DSC and MSc level before you can enter our program. The university, um, anticipating the importance of the center, has supported it in diverse ways. And one key support is as, uh, during the initial stage when the funds have not been received. Uh, the, the, the university supported the center uh, an initial amount of 1.5 million uh, Ghana cities. You know, that really uh, helped them to key start. Then they were repaid when funds came in. Despite the successes of RCs, the center still has infrastructural and financial handicaps. In terms of space, it is currently sheltered in a temporary building on the UNE campus in Sunyani, but due to the lack of space, it runs all of its activities in one laboratory, namely the Renewable Energy Lab. The good news is the center is raising its own ultra-modern facility, which is nearing completion. The new structure will house four state-of-the-art laboratories when completed. Not only does the center seek to be financially stable, it also seeks to run a digital education platform. In pursuit of that, the center has made provision for adequate cameras and multimedia equipment in all classrooms and backed these with uninterrupted internet access to students in its ultra-modern building. We have quite a number of um, projects that we are doing across um, the world. Currently, we are selected as um, Sustainable Energy Service Center by MIDA, the Millennium Development Authority. So we will be able to um, help the energy industry in Ghana, especially the industries in terms of energy audit and energy efficiency. We have also been selected by GIZ um, to provide um, training for um, farmers and credit providers in solar pump irrigation technology systems. So we are actually setting up a demonstration site here on campus where we'll be irrigating a three acre land to be able to demonstrate solar pump irrigation systems. It is one of the best forms of irrigation that especially people in sub-Saharan Africa will depend on. The center has a wide range of academic and industrial partners, both locally and internationally. The local institutional partners are the Takrade, Sunyani, Koforidia, Ho, and Tamale Technical Universities in Ghana. On the international front, the academic partners include the University of Lome in Togo, University of Ibadan in Nigeria, Milton Magai College in Sierra Leone, and Liverpool John Morsch University in England. Other academic partners are with institutions in Germany, New Zealand, Canada, and a number of other countries. The Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, the Energy Commission, the Volta River Authority, the Bui Power Authority, the Ghana Grid Company, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, and the Northern Electricity Distribution Company, are all part of the center's industrial partners in Ghana. Um, some of the research um, projects that the center is currently undertaking, we have quite a number of them, um, about five or six, but I'll talk briefly about a few of them. So the first one, we call it the Gendic Design STEAM program. So this is a collaboration between UNE and also RCs, spearheaded by RCs and also Charlton University in Canada. 
and they are looking at ways to develop or to build capacity in research, also design and also dissemination of gendered activities or innovation in STEAM, what we call STEAM. So it's similar to STEM. So we are talking about science, technology, innovation, and arts, and also mathematics. But with this one, they are actually focusing on um, some kind of problems or challenges affecting women. The center's major source of funds are from the World Bank, under the Africa Centers of Excellence project and funding from external projects won by the center. I've come up with some you know, you know, innovations in terms of uh, output of our research. So we have developed what we call power tube, which is an energy storage device that can be used to store power so that uh, you can use the power in case the grid goes off or we have power outage. So that can last for about, depending on the appliances that you have in your house, it can take up to about 12 hours. So it's an energy storage device that we have developed that is currently working, that we are looking up to commercializing it so that it can be out there for the community. We have other projects uh, where we provide energy solutions to island communities and upgrade communities. So this is something that we've also been doing. Uh, so if you go to the remote areas in the Volta region, you will find it there. We have been able to supply them with power coming from the energy engineer inside. This is an um, energy lab. Right? So this energy lab comprises of, I mean, it's supposed to be an energy lab and environmental and all of that, but everything is put together because of space, right? So this is energy and environmental lab here. All right, so the ongoing projects at the center here, I mean, at the lab, the projects do not occur at the lab here, but we have several projects that encompasses or involves, I mean, activities of the lab. So we have projects like the China South Appropriation Project, we have NIDA project, we have gender design project, we have solar irrigation project which is also ongoing where students or people will be taken through how irrigation activities are done to encourage agriculture. The RCs emphasizes community engagement as a core mandate of its activities, attested to by many communities that have been beneficiaries of the center's interventions. We have a lot of instrument when it comes to energy management or energy auditing. And then as part of the instrument, I have this as uh, one of the instruments that we use for energy auditing in residential facilities and commercial facilities. So this is light meter. Normally, uh, each facility or each room has a certain amount of light that it needs for you to use to perform a, a particular tax. So normally, we go to the facility and then use this lux meter or light meter to, de to detect the amount of light that is required in the particular facility. So in order to measure the amount of uh, light that one might need in a special environment to perform a particular tax, we use this lux meter to measure the amount of light intensity. Normally, we normally use it at the working surface. So we look at the position of where the light is and measure the height from there from that position to what? The working surface. For instance, if uh, I'm working on this surface, I have to make sure that my lax meter is positioned close or on top of the meter or on, on the table so that I'll take the measurement. And taking the measurement, you make sure that your shadow does not cast on, hot on the surface of the, hot, the lax meter. So after that, I will take several uh, points of the readings and then take the average and take their way to determine the amount of uh, intensity or the light that that particular room needs. So if we have recommendations, if uh, it meets a certain threshold, we make recommendations whether the particular room needs improvement in terms of light or have to decrease in terms of light. So the international students, we are giving a package. I wouldn't say a special package, but we are giving a package. Um, which is different from the national student. So each uh, international student 
uh, as an accommodation, um, a stipend, a monthly stipend, and we have a resident permit which is proceed for us through the center. Um, and health insurance, the, um, the center covers all the um, medical fees. So when you're sick, you pay for it, but you are refunded. Like all, all of it is refunded to you. I really wish to compliment the program coordinators for this wonderful encounter. My little experience shows that the combination of the lecturers and facilitators is one of the best for the country so far. The future of RCs is very bright because we are going digital education. That is the focus of the world. We believe that by that we will reach out to the whole world. And so we are going to invest a lot in digital education. If you are looking for a world-class center of excellence in energy and environmental sustainability, RCs is your first point of call.